afternoon or good evening. Whatever time of day it is, it's good to have you with us today on the Upside Up podcast. My name is Jeremy, and I'm joined today, as always, by my old buddy, old friend, old pal, Garrett Horn. How are you, sir? Howdy. (laughs) It's good to have you with us uh, today, buddy. And we are not joined by anyone else. It's actually just you and me. How about that? Caleb's sitting up there. Yes, but he's not a special guest this time. Um, I mean, we don't have any guests. It's I haven't talked to you in a long time. How are you doing? You haven't talked to me in a long time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I see you literally everywhere. <laughs> I know. I see you everywhere. I was talking to my parents about that tonight. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm a bad influence, I guess. Yep. They're telling you you need to see less of me. Yep. No. No. Well, today on the show, uh, we're going to discuss some memories pertaining uh, to college football, I guess. Uh, I'm so unprepared for this. (laughs) If you know Garrett, he he is a huge college football fan, a huge Alabama football fan. Oh, Dad! And I'm a big Auburn fan, so War Eagle, and we're going to discuss uh, some of our favorite memories about watching football as that time of year comes upon us. it is this weekend when it starts for us. So Actually, uh, this Thursday. That, that's true, Thursday. But for Auburn, Alabama, it starts on Saturday. So we're definitely excited about that. It's, it's in the air, man. It's in the air. I feel it. I do, too. Uh, and then we'll have the Clash of the Wits, and we'll have more to say about that when we get there. But um, we'll have those jokes. And then I'm going to share another embarrassing story. Uh, it's not really a long story, but it's awfully embarrassing and I don't think you've heard any of this story good it made it made Amber laugh I think as hard as I've ever seen her laugh and that's pretty hard oh. so uh, anyway so I'm looking forward to that one well I answer some listener questions and then uh, Garrett's got our listening assignment for the week so uh, we can look forward to that all right well let's get started with uh, talking about those memories what what is some of your favorite memories regarding college football buddy 2009 2000. <laughs> 11, 2012, uh, and 2015. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, uh, I really thought about trying to narrow it down to one memory, but college football, Alabama football, it's just something that, it's not just the football, it's something that, like, I've done, always done with my family, my friends, you know, living in Alabama, everybody's into it, so it's just my favorite time of year. And, yeah. you know, it's funny because growing up, Alabama was – pretty bad I those kinda, were glorious days uh-huh okay I, I my first year really being into football I was probably six years old and it was when Sean Alexander was uh running back at Alabama um and Alabama was pretty good that year they won the SEC I think they were 10 and 3 or something um but then after that um poof, for a few years we were we were pretty bad uh yeah. it was a rough time but you know, those, I mean, those years, even those years when we weren't good, contain some of my favorite memories. Um, yeah. Getting to go to games as a kid, uh, watching games with, you know, my aunt, who has now passed away. She was a big Alabama fan, and I got That's to go. Special. Yeah, I got to go to her last game that she ever got to go to. Um, so, it's just it's something that shaped, that helped shape my childhood, and something I always get excited about every year. So, yeah, yeah. I can understand that. I. To touch on what you said about um, living in Alabama, for that if we have a listener that is not in Alabama, which we do have some, I've looked at the stats, but if you don't live in Alabama, you don't understand what it's like around here when fall rolls around. Everyone gets so competitive, and I love it. I I, I eat it up, but there are some times where it just gets really annoying. <laughs> when, when, you know, Auburn loses a game they shouldn't have lost or something, you know you have to listen to it from Alabama. Or Alabama the same way, if they lose a game that they shouldn't have lost, we're going to give it to them. So. You know, that's what I think when Alabama loses. It's Obviously, I'm sad I'm going to lose, but I'm like, all right, what's my message to the Auburn fans this week? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. I thought about the same thing. And there were, there were people growing up that – I would argue about football. I took it way too seriously when I was a kid, and I would just argue football. You were one of those people. Yeah, we didn't up. like each other growing up, and it was because of Auburn, and Alabama. I had nothing against you otherwise. We just didn't like each other because of that. So, it, yeah, it's it's definitely an interesting dynamic here with uh, the Auburn Alabama rivalry. Uh, it's second to none in my opinion, but. Uh, one of my favorite memories, of course, like you, I grew up watching Auburn football. Well, that's not like you, but watching football. <laughs> oh, and, I watch Auburn, too. Yeah, well, I don't watch much <laughs> Alabama. It just kind of sickens me these days, but they just never lose, and it's annoying. Yeah. But one day, one day they'll lose. But anyway, so growing up, I watched a lot of Auburn football, and 
uh, I got to experience that with my dad. I didn't really care that much, and my dad cared some growing up, and then through his caring is <laughs> kind of how I cared, and uh, kind of grew from then, from there. But uh, one of my favorite memories, um, of course, was the 2010 year because that's the only championship they've won since I've been alive, and so that was that was definitely exciting uh, for me. And one of my favorite days I've ever had thus far was the day that we beat Alabama in the Iron Bowl. But it's not just because we beat Alabama. Garrett has his, has his hands on the side of his face, and he's kind of pouty looking. But it's not just because we beat Alabama. That is a huge contributing factor. They ruined my birthday. Yeah, that was your birthday. My birthday's on November 25th. I'm not sure if it was the exact day, but it was right around there. Yeah. And when you jump out to a 24 nothing lead... And then lose it. And then lose it. It kind of ruins things. And y'all have a certain animosity for Cam Newton and the fact that they that he did that yeah. to y'all. Of course, that makes it worse, which I can understand. Well, then you topped it three years later with a kick six. Yeah. That was worse feeling because I was there. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> the reason that was my best day, one of the best days I've ever had, was because uh, I was 15 years old, I believe, 14 or 15. I was 14. And I got a cell phone that day that was black <laughs> friday that was the first uh cell phone i ever had so i remember being in verizon wireless getting my first cell phone and looking at the game on the wall and auburn was just stinking it up and so i kind of had this pit in my stomach but i was still excited about getting <laughs> the phone and then we came back and won so that was awesome but on top of that we got an, a uh, washer and dryer that day a new one a really great deal on black friday and we got it in a very dramatic way we went through the line didn't get a voucher or anything and went up to the cashier and the dude in front of us decided not to get that washer and get a different washer he was one of the ones with the vouchers and we mom just politely asked the cashier are there any more of those left and she said if you didn't get one of those vouchers no ma'am i'm sorry so we were about to walk away disappointed and the guy in front of us opened his uh coat jacket pocket and whipped out a voucher and he just gave it to us merry christmas wow it, it was really dramatic so that was really cool so it was, it was just a great all-around day for me and then of course the kick six that was a fantastic memory Caleb and Heather uh, Heather's my sister and her husband Caleb came over to watch that game and uh you know we all had dreams that we were going to win that game but I really didn't expect us to win that game and the way we won it in that way that our house has never been that loud before <laughs> in my life and it's it's kind of a blur now because we just had so much adrenaline everyone was jumping up and down uh, it was it was awesome. I me and Caleb kind of bumped each other like a chest bump type thing, and I guess I did it a little harder than I should have because he fell back on <laughs> his wife, my sister. So uh -oh. but there was a there was a lot of fun memories that year. That was a really dramatic year, definitely. But that um, game stank. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, it did for you. But I mean, it was you take away the the alliance aspect, which team you're going for. That's a it was pretty awesome turn of events the way it happened so uh, you have to admit that mm, I don't have to yes you do no it was I, I can't say anything good about it. I still haven't watched the play in its entirety since that day really I have not watched the play in its entirety well I'll give you just to make you feel better that the championship game that year uh, you know we lost to Florida State and I don't watch highlights of that game yeah I'll watch them if I do watch highlights I, I watch it up to when we took the lead with a minute something to go mm -hmm. I, won't, I won't watch it past then so yeah that, that one still stings that's the, that's probably the hardest loss I've ever experienced so yeah funny as fact about me is uh, I've as I've gotten older it's kind of gotten a little bit harder because um, I don't have time to like read about the games as much after they're done but from pretty much every game from maybe 2002 to last year I can name you the score yeah, that's it's pretty awesome. He doesn't just name you the score; he'll name you the uh, the place it was at. Yeah, and, and, and if some I can't, key to the game. Yeah, so. if I can't name the exact score, I can tell you pretty much what happened in the game. So, so. two thousand six against Ole Miss. Oh, Alabama won twenty six to twenty three in overtime. Really bad Ole Miss team. Not a good Alabama team. Uh, Leron McLean, I think I think he caught a touchdown pass in overtime to win the game. I can I can assure you there is no stats in front of him look at all. Look that up, Caleb. Caleb's going to look up the 2006 Ole Miss Alabama game just to verify that. But I, I would I'm pretty I sure bet it was 26-23. I know that Leron McLean scored a game winning touchdown. And it was in overtime, 
It was 26, a 23. Is really, sport, so. really ugly game. I, I mean, Ole Miss was a bad team that year. I, I think of myself as a very um, committed fan to Auburn, but I, there is no way I could ever do that. I couldn't name you scores to most games, period. Uh, I think when we beat Oregon, I think we won something like 22 19 or something yeah, along those lines. So that's about the best I can do. I can't. Ness, I can't say with certainty the was it thirty four twenty eight when we beat y'all on the kick six. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it is, but I can't. I don't have a vivid memory like you do in that case. So, but uh, uh, another awesome memory was uh, a couple years later, we were playing. Uh, Auburn was playing Alabama, and we lost this Iron Bowl. But Justin and Aaron, Justin who gives us the jokes <laughs> uh, weekly, he, they came over and watched the game with us. And uh, there was one instance, I think either we got a turnover or we threw a really long touchdown or something like that to Sammy Coates. And uh, me and Justin got so excited, we jumped up and uh, high-fived. And it was one of those high-fives where you hit, you, you know, there's so much adrenaline, you hit so hard, it bruised both of our hands. We, like, we high-fived, and then we were both like, ow! So... Uh, that was one of my favorite memories, definitely watching uh, that game with Justin, even though we lost that game. It was a really good game, uh, and, you know, it was high scoring, so it was exciting. Uh, we've got uh, the score here. Garrett is right. It was 26-23 in overtime, so he's just incredible. <laughs> just go up to him if you ever see him and give him a random opponent and score, I mean, in a uh, year, and see if he can give you a score. He's pretty He's pretty flawless on it. I've- Not flawless. You're pretty flawless. Missed I mean, a few you miss years. a few every once in a while, but you know the major ones you definitely get. So, way better than I can do. Well, anything else you want? Any other memories you wanted to add? My first uh, feeling of like a big win would have been uh, 1999 Alabama against Florida. Um, Alabama beat Florida 40 to 39 in the swamp. What I remember mm-hmm. about the game is uh, Sean Alexander sc- scored. They went to overtime. Sean. Alec- and Florida scored. They missed the field goal. Sean Alexander on the first play uh, runs a touchdown in, and Alabama <laughs> misses the extra point. Oh, dear. So it's 39-39. But Florida had jumped off sides. Oh, dear. So he got another <laughs> shot. And he made it. And he made it. Oh, that's Barely. Cool. I mean, it was a terrible – I mean, I don't know – we had some kicking issues that year, I guess. I mean, I don't remember a lot of details, but yeah. – because I've seen the kick again. It was horrible. Yeah, uh, and then we lost the Orange Bowl that year because we missed an extra point. <laughs> oh wow! <So. laughs> Rough year for a kicker. Yeah. Well, I, thinking back, I remember games here and there. There was one game against Florida where we went into the swamp. They were the number one team in the country. I, they had Tebow, I think, that year, and uh, it was either Tebow or Leak, and uh, we we beat them in the swamp. And, sure, that was in the swamp. Yep, yeah, it was in the swamp. I remember y'all beating them around 2006 in Auburn. We we beat them in two thousand. We beat them in Auburn, and then we went to the swamp, and they were better that year. And we beat them hmm. in the swamp. So that. it was a pretty awesome win. We weren't very good that year, but we just played well that night. So you know, you got those great memories of teams that weren't that great and pulling off an upset. Upsets way better than being uh, just stomping everyone every time, right? 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 Wrong. Although, you know, when you stomp people every time, it's like it's fun. You get excited during the game, but. You know, especially if they're a bad team, you're like, okay, that was fun. Yeah. But when you beat a good team, like Alabama beating Clemson last year, that was yeah. one of the most satisfying wins because that Clemson took Alabama. Yep, they were toe to toe with. I mean, toe to toe. That's the one I was looking for. Toe to toe was the whole time, and we pulled it out. So that was very satisfying. Yeah, I can imagine it. And that same win against Oregon, that was the same kind of feeling. I mean, that was a great Oregon team that year. But uh, so predict Auburn's record this year. Well. Part of me wants to wants to just be a homer and just say that we're gonna surprise everyone and like lose one game and have a chance to go to the playoff or whatever. But realistically, I think we probably win nine, something like that. But I think we'll have a better year than people are expecting us to. But and what do you think about Alabama? I know uh, that y'all win championships. No, like, like I mean, people eat meals, but it's <laughs> uh, under Saban. I've kind of come to expect we'll be we'll be good. Um, we're normally one thing I've noticed is we're normally two or three plays away from mm-hmm. winning or losing 
the national championship or the SEC. Mm-hmm. Um, so it'll come down to those two plays. I, I'm leaning like eleven and one, ten and two. Okay. But we have a. I mean, there's some tough, some tough road games. Uh, I think USC has the talent to make it a close game. Uh, yeah. At Tennessee is going to be a tough game. At LSU is going to be a tough game. Um, we have. I mean, we have some tough games, and you know, if you you don't, if our quarterback situation doesn't pan out. Yeah, Auburn the same way. Yeah, yeah. so. Both teams are kind of uh, uh, hinging on the quarterback play, so it'll be an interesting year. I think it'll be a, a more dramatic year for both teams. You know, I don't think either team's gonna kill everybody. So yeah, but I, I'm I'm thinking more of the ten wins for Alabama uh, this year. I don't, you know, you lost a lot of things last year. Lost a lot of defense. Lost you know Derrick Henry and all that kind of stuff. Which I think personally, I think Derrick Henry pretty much single handedly won you some of those games last year. Which so Henry's best running back. In Alabama, I've ever seen. Yeah, he's one of the best running backs I've ever seen. Period. But anyway, thank you for uh, indulging us as we talk about sports. We don't, we we won't be doing that much on the show, but we thought that since it was coming up, you know, it'd be fun to talk about. Oh, I love football. I know you do. <laughs> I do too. Uh, the last thing I'll say is that really watching uh, Auburn football, it's really become a tradition for my sister and and Caleb to come over and watch the game with us and that's been something I've really enjoyed and one of my favorite it was just one of my favorite memories about the kick six is the fact that they were there and they got to experience that firsthand it's I mean it's an awesome play but to say you were watching it live that was that's really awesome you can tell your kids about that so uh and so I'm really looking forward to this Saturday they're coming over as far as I know to watch the Clemson game and you know you never know maybe we'll pull an upset maybe maybe yeah Clemson's supposed to be pretty good but it's hard to win in Jordan Hare. I mean, even last year, I think Alabama was a lot more talented than Auburn. And I mean, yeah. it was a pretty close game all the way through until the last minute or so. Alabama took the. I'll say this: I know that we've that I said this the last thing I'll say. If Blake Countess had caught that interception at the end of the uh, first half, that game would have been completely different. I, I will stand by. It. I will stand by that. Well, you know, the day I die when when um that was a pick what's, six. What's in that his hands. Uh, that receiver that called that crazy pass? Uh, his name is well, it's last some Smith, right? It's it is. Uh, yeah, I, I was like, right here moment. we go again. Yeah, you know, but uh, Jason Smith, Jason Smith, man, I was like, I that was a really incredible that. play. But you know, our quarterback play was terrible. If we had a decent quarterback, I think we won that game because our defense played more than well enough for us to win the game. So yeah, I don't know what Alabama's problem was. They were tight. They were, they were tight that game. They yeah, were, they were scared to lose. Yeah. Man, I wish we'd won that one. That would have been awesome. Anyway, so moving on. Looking forward to this Saturday, definitely. So, All right, so we'll go on to the Clash of the Wits now. Uh, Steven gave us a joke. We'll start with him. His joke is, I don't understand why people didn't see the fall of communism coming. I mean, you could see red flags everywhere. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. I didn't think it was all that funny. I mean, it's, it's all you right. You have to understand the joke. You know? I understand the joke. I know you do. I meant like, <laughs> for, for like, I don't know, maybe some people don't understand that the communists are known as the Reds, yeah. and they had red flags. That was, I thought it was pretty funny. It, it's funny, but it's kinda, Justin pushed him this kinda week. Kind of nerdy joke. <laughs> Justin pushed him this week. Here we go. I, I don't want to play it up too big, but I thought this was funny. What do you call a sleepwalking nun? <laughs> a Roman Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> I think Justin got it. I think Justin (laughs) pulled one out. So we're going with two and one, I think. Caleb, do you agree? Caleb agrees, so we'll we'll give it to Justin this week. I I think they were both quality this week for the first time. They were. But I like that one from Justin. (laughs) Roman Catholic. (laughs) That's pretty good. All right, Justin, way to bring it. Way to bring it this week. All right, well, we'll move on to my my embarrassing story, and I will preface it by saying that uh, I do know how to drive. All right. I'll preface that. Preface it with that. Did you get a ticket? I didn't get a ticket. And it's not it's nothing like that. All right. Well, this goes back to actually very recently recent after the uh Steven uh story. So I had a lot of embarrassing things happen in a short amount of time. This one has nothing to do with Steven, so it's not part of that story. <laughs> but it is extremely embarrassing and uh I'll share it with you now. We went to Dollar General, me and Alyssa did. We were out on a out on a date, and uh, I thought about that Father's Day was coming up. It was the that sun that Saturday. Excuse me, Sunday. It was a Saturday. Father's Day is on a Sunday. So in June. Yes. Okay. And uh, so I was like, I, uh, babe, I need to stop here at Dollar General and get a card. 
and uh, she was okay. I pulled in, parked the car, and uh, so I said, "Do you want to come in, or do you just want to stay in the car?" And she's like, "I'll just stay in the car." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, there's no reason for her to come in. You know, it's going to be fast. I'm just going to pop in, get a card, pay, leave." Well, that's not really what happened, and I'll explain. So I walk in. And there's a brother and a sister. I think they're brother and sister. They could be boyfriend and girlfriend or husband and wife, but they looked pretty similar, and they were looking for Father's Day cards. I I assume they're brother and sister. Anyway, so they're there at the cards. Now, oddly enough, at Dollar General this this year, that Dollar General at least, the section of Father's Day cards was really small, Mm -hmm. uh, really small. And I walk up there, and there are two people standing in front of it, and I can't look at any cards until they're done. So I am waiting in line at the Dollar General. No, not to pay, not yet. Yeah. I'm look. I'm waiting in line to look at cards. So they finally hurry up and leave, and I find a card pretty quickly, actually, and uh, I turn to go get in line. I notice the same uh, brother and sister are in line, about to pay, um, at the cashier, when a, a gentleman comes up and starts talking to them. This gentleman seems a little bit too friendly. He's one of those guys, you know, it's like, why is he talking to them? They're talking about the beach or something. I'm just like, what what is up with this guy? And I immediately think, boy, I hope he doesn't talk to me. (laughs) I don't want, I'm not the type of guy that I just want to talk to a stranger. Just, you know, who's like that? We are in the South and people are friendly. But this guy was not, I don't attribute it to just being friendly. Um... So I get in line, I see that he's talking to them, and I notice that he looks at me. I'm like, oh, <laughs> here he comes. So he walks over to me, and he said, you buying a Father's Day card or something like that? He's a, he's kind of a scruffy looking guy. He's like wearing a ball cap and uh, kind of an Alabama hick type uh-huh. style. And uh, he walks up, you buying a Father's Day card? And I'm like, yeah, I am. He said, well, let's see it. And I kind of show it to him. <laughs> and he's like, all right, all right. Well... Uh, he starts just to ask me questions. I can't remember all the questions. I don't know if Alyssa would or not, but he asked me probably 10 questions. And he's just spitting them off. Some of them, some of the highlights were, uh, well, well, this isn't a question. He said, well, you're a good looking guy. <laughs> and I was like, Awkward. okay, <laughs> all righty. Um, and then he said, I think his next question after that was, how old are you? And I was like, I, I'd rather not say. You said that? Yes. I didn't want to give him my age. He was too creepy. <laughs> this guy was really creepy, and I hope to make that very clear. This guy was extremely <laughs> creepy, and I cannot emphasize enough how badly I wanted out of that store. <laughs> I cannot emphasize that enough, and you'll understand why in a moment. So he keeps asking me questions. How old are you? And I say, I'd rather not say. And he goes, hmm, maybe about 19? No, I'm sorry. He said 18. I'm 20 years old. He says, 18? I'm like, no, sir. He goes, 17? I'm like, no, sir. <laughs> he goes, 16? Like, no, sir. I mean, yes. how old was he? Older guy, younger guy? At least in 40s. 40s. Oof. Um, 16? No, sir. <laughs> like, do you drive here? <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> Notice that he did not, he never went above 18 years old. Baby face. Hashtag yeah. baby face. Uh, but he just, you know, he kept, keeps probing me, keeps probing me, then he gets behind me and gets in line. I'm like, this guy is directly behind me. He is not just behind me. He is like three inches from my butt. He is like standing right there. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, what are you doing? And I'm very uncomfortable. I can't scoot up much farther. Why is this line taking so long? <laughs> I have no explanation for why this line was taking as long as it was, but I stood in line for at least five minutes. Now, Dollar Generals, at least in the South, they are severely understaffed. Yeah. But there is no explanation. There is no excuse for why this guy, <laughs> um, why this uh, this line is taking as long as it is. So he stands directly behind me, very, very close. My wallet is in my back pocket, and I'm thinking, I, I'm, I just, you know, I listen to those nerve endings and just make sure that that's back there. I don't feel for it, but I, uh, with my hand, I should say, but I feel for it mentally. And I'm like, okay, it's still there. And I, I was locked in on that wallet. I was like, this guy, may pit. I had so many things going through my mind. I had Alyssa's in the car. I got to get back out there. 
She's going to start to worry. Uh, I'm very uncomfortable because I'm responsible for her. I'm here to protect her and all that kind of stuff while we're out on a date. Creepo behind me is <laughs> <laughs> much too close to me. So I'm thinking, he is awfully too close to me. Why was he asking my age? Why is that his business? I didn't need to be told that I was good looking, period. Especially <laughs> by a 40-year-old man. He didn't seem fruity. I'll say that. Yeah. But I didn't know if he wanted my money. I didn't know what he wanted. But... uh Anyway, so he, he was really creeping me out. Finally, the line moves, and I pay for my card as quickly as I can. And uh, I grab the, the bag, and I'm like, have a nice day to the dude that checked me out. And uh, I'm, I go out the door, and I kind of jog out to my car. As I jog out to my car, I notice that I parked beside the brother and sister. The sister was driving. The brother was in the passenger seat. And they were headed to their car, and uh, there was there was one space in between in between our cars. And he says, uh, "That guy was grilling you, or something like that." And I I uh, I kind of repeated something that he said. It was like, "How old are you?" <laughs> I said, <laughs> "Oh like, no!" I said like that, and uh, no, that's not anything. Oh. But I was just giving it for uh, to walk you through a story. And he laughs or whatever. I get in the car. And Alyssa can tell that I have a distressed look on my face. I've been <laughs> I've been creeped out, and uh, I went out out of there as soon as possible because I didn't know what this dude was going to do once he got out of the store. You know, uh-huh. um, so I was just I was I had a lot of things going through my mind. I was a little creeped out. Started to I wouldn't say panic, but I wanted out of there quickly. And uh, I said, I'll tell you in a second. And so I pop that car and drive, and I hit the accelerator. And I'm not flying or anything, but I go, I go forward. Oh no! And it was one of the. <laughs> I didn't think about the cement blocks in front of me. <gasps> <laughs> and so I go, blum 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 blum. <laughs> and Alyssa's like holding on for dear life in there, and uh, <laughs> she she said later that she looked over at the guy. And the girl that were sitting in the car, and in her walk, in her words, they were hee hawing. <laughs> <laughs> they were just rolling in there, and I'm so glad I didn't see them because it just would have been so much more embarrassing. But of course, they know the situation, and then I just not in a moment of not thinking go forward because there was no car in front of me, and so I just went over the. I, I was just gonna go straight through uh-huh. and get out as fast as possible, not having to back up, and. Uh, Completely forgot about the cement blocks in front of me. <laughs> went over those. Well, if that wasn't bad enough, I turned a little too short and it hit the curb. <laughs> <laughs> so now I do look like a 15 year old that can't drive. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I get out of there and Alyssa's like, she's kind of laughing. She doesn't know what's going on, but she st- kind of laughs at the situation. Also, kind of scared, very embarrassed. <laughs> and uh, I go out on the highway 72 and I head towards their house and she was like what happened <laughs> and so I explained the whole situation and she was just like you just need to calm down it's okay <laughs> anyway so uh, I don't know I don't know I don't know man I don't know I don't know what the guy wanted I don't know why that line took as long as it did and was, why and why did I have to forget the cement ball did he talk to the couple he talked he talked to the brother and sister and uh, then he talked to me and then after he was done talking to me somebody else walked up and the other dude was engaging in the conversation and then both of them insisted on reading my card, not just looking at it. Oh. I forgot to mention that part. I'm standing in line, and he's like, well, let's see it. And I have to give it, and I give it to them to read. And I was like, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> he starts asking me if I mow the yard. I'm like, yeah, I mow the yard. <laughs> anyway, it was, just, it was a weird situation. So anyway, I thoroughly embarrassed myself. Hope, hopefully I'll never see those people again. Probably won't. But they have a good story to tell for sure. And I guess I do too. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm sorry, babe, that I embarrassed you. I embarrassed me. <laughs> All right. Well, <clears throat> we got some listener questions uh, this week. We got uh, we got multiple, of them, and then we have a uh, comment on Facebook that we want to read. So, uh, at Abby Caroline on Twitter. Who's that? <laughs> uh, she wrote, "What is y'all's favorite historic time period to study slash learn about, and why?" And I was mowing the yard, and I was thinking about this, and 
I don't really care to study history. It's not it's not really my cup of tea. But I like ancient history, like Roman, Greek history, Roman Catholic, Roman Catholic <laughs> history. <No. laughs> I like I, I don't know. I, I I like history a lot. Um yeah, ancient history. I like it better than the more recent. Probably so probably you know, I like studying about Native Americans and I mean like I'm talking like Mayans and Aztecs and right. Incas, mm-hmm. people like that. So I guess ancient history. Good question, Abby. Why did you answer the why? Why? Uh, I don't know. I guess uh, I guess just because their way of life is so different, their yeah. way of thinking and the way they did things was so different than That's the true. way we do it. So it's just fascinating. Growing up, uh, really my favorite kind of history that I loved to study was the presidents. So just the facts about the presidents that kind of thing so growing up I, I really enjoyed that and I guess I'll probably say around that early uh birth of the country that kind of thing where that's probably my favorite I would say they're you know really ingenuitive and uh forward thinkers so that's that's pretty cool to me but all right well uh we also got a question uh from Katie uh Katie Sexton who does our uh music and she she asked do you surmise that the vociferations of an amphibious quadruped are a prognostication of precipitation. Well, Katie, correlation does not always equal causation. Amen. So simply because a this amphibian, uh, what's the word, might be... Vociferous? Might, might be vociferous. It doesn't necessarily mean that precipitation is coming. I don't, I don't find any scientific data that would suggest that... Uh, the sound of a frog croaking would mean that rain's about to come. So that's the answer to the question. I I, I concur, Rashad. For those that don't didn't understand all those words, Rashad Carswell translated that for us. Uh, he he was on kind of the group chat thing that we that she wrote that on, and uh, he he translated it as when frogs croak does it mean that rain is coming? <laughs> I would say nah, nah. All right, G- Gable Duke. As always, gives us a question, and uh, he he asks, "What's your favorite holiday?" Favorite holiday is uh, the opening weekend of college football holiday. If it is for you, no, um, I I guess Christmas. Just be, and not, you know, Christmas is weird. I don't love the day itself. I know it, it's I enjoy, the build up. I enjoy it. I enjoy the day, especially yeah. in the morning. But it's all of, I like the uh, you know the the music and the. You know, fun and yeah, d- cold weather and yeah, the family time family, and all that kind yeah. of stuff. The the way everyone, if you notice, everyone's mood kind of changes. As yeah, they build up. yeah. Everybody's a little bit more jolly. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I know what you mean. I, the day it's never really that special. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, my favorite holiday, um, my favorite time of year. I'll say this first. My favorite time of year is the first weekend of March Madness. Oh The college yeah. basketball. If that's a holiday. That is my favorite holiday. But if, you know, just a national holiday, mine would be Thanksgiving. I, I really love those th- that weekend, you know. I'm out of school that whole week, and then Wednesday night you have the anticipation of it all and, you know, the preparation. So that's mm-hmm. always been a cool thing to me. And then Thursday, that's one of those holidays that deliver, you know, yeah. deliver the goods. And uh, so th- that's a lot of fun, lots of family time. And it's one of those holidays that we string out over multiple days. I mean... My family has been known to eat Thanksgiving dinner on Thursday. Has also been known to eat it the following week. I mean, not Friday or Saturday, but the next week. You wow. know, it's conflicting schedules or whatever. <laughs> so you know, it's just a great, it's a great time. And then Black Friday, that's always been uh, a family thing that we've done, and mm-hmm. it's a lot of fun. So that's probably mine if I had to choose one. <clears throat> I, and I love fall, man. It's just so pretty. I love fall too. The it's my chilly weather. Season. Yeah. And, and the Iron Bowls that week. So that's always fun, unless Auburn loses. So Alabama wins. Fun. Good weekend. If Alabama loses. Yeah. Ruins it. Yep. I, I, I'm I opposite, but, you know, whatever. All right. Uh, Chris and Cindy Valander, uh, Caleb's parents on Facebook, uh, commented on one of our posts uh, today. And uh, <laughs> he's got a joke for us. So <laughs> uh, a guy walks into the doctor's office and has a banana in one ear, a carrot in the other, and a stalk of celery up his nose. He says to the doctor, Hey, Doc, I don't feel so well. What is wrong with me? The doctor takes one look at him and says, I don't think you're eating right. So do you have a listening assignment? <laughs> I don't get it. Say it again. 
I don't think you're eating right. Oh, you want me to read the whole thing? Yeah, All right. A guy walks here. into a doctor's office. It's not hard, buddy. A guy walks into a doctor's office, has a banana uh-huh. in one ear, a carrot oh. in the other, oh, man. and a stalk of celery up his nose. And he says to the doctor, hey, doc, I don't feel so well. What's wrong with me? And the doctor takes one look at him and says, I don't think you're eating right. <laughs> okay. So, I got it. Uh, also, uh, we it was just, like so obvious that I missed it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's, it's it's funny, but it's it's a very Mr. Chris joke. Yeah, you know, Mr. Chris. So, uh, and then uh, Joshua Volander uh, uh, commented on Facebook with a question uh, just here at the wire. So, uh, props to Joshua. But he asked, "How do you guys deal with deadlines?" So maybe a college type question, maybe work. I don't know. How do you deal with deadlines, buddy? Uh. At work, I uh, if I have multiple deadlines around the same time, I uh, prioritize and think what's the most important. So maybe what's the highest ranking person asking for, <laughs> and who, who's asking for what. So uh, just making the right priorities and uh, managing your time well. Yeah, I think that, I think you hit the nail on the head, especially with the time management. Um, that's that's a really big thing. You don't have to worry about a deadline if it's already done. So uh, if you manage your time and get it done ahead of time, even if you don't have the time to do it, but you manage your time to where you, you work in increments or, um, you know, you don't have to cram at the end. You always do better work and uh, less stress and live a better lifestyle. So that's that would be our answer there. Thank you, Joshua, for that question. All right, Garrett, uh, what is this week's listening assignment for the people? The Upside Up Jingle. All right. No, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> no, that is one. Yeah. Uh, but uh, "Yellow Submarine" by the Beatles. Now, this was probably a really popular song when it came out, but it came out what probably in the fifties, maybe the sixties. But I was gonna guess seventies, but what do I know? No, I don't think it was the seventies. But uh, anyway, yeah, I, I'm not a huge Beatles fan, but I have a friend growing up who was a big Beatles fan big Beatles fan and the first song I remember listening to with him was Yellow Submarine and it's it's a corny song it's funny yeah. but I like it so yeah. uh, it's a good thing go it's listen to it yeah uh, so just to remind you about the listening assignments what we're trying to do is trying to broaden your scope of listening uh, it's primarily about music so just secular songs or whatever that maybe you haven't heard of before or aren't as familiar with and so your job is to take that listening assignment listen to it and give us a little bit of feedback what you thought of it so last week uh we did uh it's all right by Huey lewis in the news and uh haven't gotten any feedback yet so listeners do your job listen to that uh listen to that tune and tell us what you think so uh uh get in on the conversation definitely and since football season starts this week uh go out and write either roll tide or where you go whatever team you pull for right write your team channel on our facebook wall or tweet us. Yeah, Either one. or tweet us. Yeah. Uh, a couple of things before we close. Um, so the the title, The Clash of the Wits, you know, I came up with it late at night, and I haven't really been able <laughs> to figure out a better one. So we're going to turn to the people. If you have an idea for a, a title for that segment, uh, please give that to us. You can give it to us on social media, uh, anywhere really. But uh, make sure that you uh, give us some feedback. We really appreciate those. And I just thought I completely forgot to answer two questions. One that we got on SoundCloud. Wow. And uh, I don't know who asked us this question. Um, I can give you the the title of their uh, of their of their profile, but I don't know exactly who uh, asked us the question. But uh, I think it was Galaxy Explosion one four two one something like that. But uh, this person asked. Why did uh, why did we start the podcast? And uh, I'll answer that. It was I, I feel like I'm the most qualified to answer that because <laughs> this was really it was really my idea. Um, I I wanted to uh, have some sort of creative outlet outlet for uh, for myself, and uh, I wanted to do this uh, with a buddy of mine. I will uh, have that person uh, remain nameless, but he we wanted to uh, have a YouTube channel together for for years. And never really panned out, and I thought about podcasting. It's a cheaper alternative. I've always been into been into radio and audio and that kind of thing. Well, I say always. It's been an interest of mine, at least. And uh, 
So this is really just a creative outlet outlet for myself and uh, whoever would join me with uh, on the show. So um, that's really what it was when thinking about what we wanted to do with the show. I really wanted to make try to make a difference in people's lives, so that's why we've had some of the heavier episodes and that kind of thing. Of course, we're going to goof off, but um, it's good to have that heavy stuff uh, make you think. And like I said, live upside up uh, in an upside down world. So that's really what we're going for here, as you know. So that's really why we started it. Um, I've always been I've been interested in podcasting for a while, and it's it's just been really fun. I'd love for this to be my full time job. I've just loved doing this, <laughs> but. Uh, it probably will never happen, but uh, along those lines, if you uh, if you do enjoy the show, something that would really really help us out, if you don't mind, go over to our iTunes, subscribe to us on there if you haven't, and uh, leave us a comment on there. Uh, that really helps uh, statistics, helps more people get involved. So uh, leave us a comment on there. Tell us what you think of the show. Give us a rating. Uh, give us five stars if you would. So uh, we really appreciate all the people that have interacted with us and. Uh, giving us feedback, uh, giving us advice, joining us on the show, sending in questions, just telling us that they've enjoyed the show. Little kids at church will come up to us and yeah. like, they listen it's to all, the show. That's the best. That is the best. <laughs> that, I mean, the older people listening, that's great. But when a kid comes up to you, it's like they take time out of their day to think about the things that you're talking about and just listen to two guys sit at a table and talk. That's, yeah. that's awesome, man. I love that. The other question that we got on, uh, we got this one on Twitter. And I completely forgot about it, so I'm sorry about that. But at B3 underscore J underscore Will, on, that? uh, that's Will Harris on Twitter. Oh. Uh, he's He's been a uh, kind of a, a new addition to the listening family, and he's he's really enjoyed the show. So he said, uh, love the show, guys. What is your favorite restaurant in Athens? In Athens? You know, I don't eat anything like unique in Athens most of the time because like, I work in Decatur Levices is really good yeah maybe that's Levices a, that's a local place we know the owner yeah, so that's really so, cool yeah they have great ribs they do have great know. ribs so, yes uh, probably Levices as far as you know local there's chain restaurants like Logan's that I really like but yeah. then I go to something Cracker Barrel but you know a local Athens restaurant I guess Levices would be I think that would be mine too I do like the places around the square and everything but yeah as a chain Probably that. I do enjoy Roosters. I don't know if there's if Roosters is I think a it chain. Is, it is a chain, but it's not. Well, it's at least not a very prominent chain. So yeah, they have Roosters. I, I do. I do enjoy them. I like them being a little staple there on Thirty One. So I like Zach's piece. Yeah. Well, that's that's a very prominent chain. <laughs> so, yeah. But in terms of an Athens restaurant, probably Levi's. Have you ever been to the Washington Street Diner? No. I've been there once. It's good. I'll have to try that one out again. Maybe we can get them to sponsor us and like be awesome. feed us food. Feed us food while we while we record. That'd be yeah. awesome. <laughs> yes. Let's see if we can make that happen. All right. Well, uh, forgive us for forgetting those two questions. Uh, hope the answers were satisfactory. Uh, well, um, so don't forget to give us the Clash of the Wits title. Um, you, your alternate there. See if we can uh, hammer something good out there. And uh, we want to give a couple shout outs before we close like we always do. We want to thank Katie for her awesome work on the music. Kevin for his work uh, recording that. Big help there. We want to thank Justin and Steven for their jokes. Uh, they brought it And actually, week, so. thank you this week. Yeah, that was good. And Justin, still behind, but it's 2 1 Steven. So, way to go, Justin. Get back in the game. <laughs> thank you for your listener questions. We really appreciate those. We've had a lot of them uh, come in. So, in terms of our show, at least. So. Yeah. Uh, we really appreciate that. Adds to the conversation. I want to thank Caleb and Corbin for their help as our editors. Corbin has moved off uh, to Arkansas for the for school, but uh, he's still a big part of the show, and we appreciate all his work. And uh, uh, Caleb's definitely a big part, so we want to thank them. Uh, I want to thank you, Garrett, for joining us, You're uh, joining me today, and being uh, being <laughs> on this show. Uh, kind of made light of you, I guess, uh, in talking about what happened with the podcast, but. <laughs> You 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 can't you jumped on board with both feet and uh, you've done a great job and I really appreciate it. Thanks, and, uh, man. Look forward to doing this uh, in the future with Bring you. Bring tears so. to my eyes. Oh boy, <laughs> getting emotional. Uh, anyway, I want to thank you, the listener, for uh, joining us today, giving us your ear for forty five minutes or so. So thank you uh, very much for that. And remember to stay upside up in this upside down world. And we'll talk at you next week. Bye.